I'm Daniel Montgomery here with sound editors from a wide variety of shows. Uh, you know, Matthew Waters from Only Murders in the Building, Michael J. Benevente from Under the Banner of Heaven, Jay Price from Welcome to Earth, Matt Skelding from The Wheel of Time, and Bobby Banks from Women of the Movement. Uh, so I'm wondering, you know, what, what first inspired each of you to pursue the art of sound for film and TV, uh, you know, from the beginning? Uh, let's start with uh, Bobby. Well, um, I personally got in by a fluke. Um, I did not have any intention of being in sound. I, I actually worked at Sound One as a uh, administrative assistant. Um, and then I just spent time, they had a studio that had mixing and Foley um, sound effects editing and things like that. And so I just spent time on my lunch hour and things like that. And um, learned how to clean up the effects library. I learned how to choose effects for clients. Um, and so that's basically how I got into sound. I realized that I was pretty technically inclined. Um, and then they had me like learn six weeks. Uh, I had six weeks in lear to learn the machine room in the back and to run a mix from the machine room. And um, I wrote down everything in a notepad and um, and then after six weeks, I was able to run my first session. Um, and then from there, I did that for a year. And then I left and treaded the pavement for like three months. And then I got hired on Desperately Seeking Susan, which was McDonough's first film as an apprentice. And, um, and then just went from there, had great teachers and things like that. So that was my start. How about uh, Matthew Waters? How about you? Uh, well, I was a radio TV major in college, and I thought I was going to go into radio and go to some crazy place. But then Stephen Flick won the uh, Oscar for Robocop, and his dad was my teacher. And he came up and talked to us about what he did for a living. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that's everything I like to do. I never knew that existed. And then I was in the Bay Area, and they said I had to move to L.A., and so that was my big question because the Bay Area doesn't like L.A., right? And so I was like, oh, my gosh. So then I, the day after I graduated, I moved to L.A. and uh, I was an intern somewhere and, you know, was a studio rat and worked my butt off and uh, learned from everybody that I could. Pretty much had it. Jay? Um, I think I came into it from music, really. I didn't know anything about the world of sound posts until my early 20s. And I did, um, there was a friend that approached me who'd done a film and said, oh, can you, can you work on the sound post for this? And that's when I discovered it. And I was just like, wow, and same sort of thing. I had no idea that this was a job. And then just pursued <clears throat> every short, short film maker I could find. Um, and we're going to a national film school. And then I slowly started working as an assistant sound editor. And yeah, it's kind of worked my way up from there, really. Michael? I, um, like Matt, I went to, well, I went to UCLA film school and I um, didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. I just wanted to work in the entertainment industry and didn't have any connections at all. But somehow I ended up, well, after a little bit stint in a mailroom, I got a job in editorial for ABC television and they helped me get into the editor's guild. Um, and then all of a sudden I um, got a job on, <laughs> this is how old I am, the original Dallas and Knott's Landing. I was the sound assistant and um, uh, Matt mentioned Steve Flick. Steve Flick was looking for a new assistant and he had just been nominated for Poltergeist and the whole gang had won Oscar for Raiders of the Lost Ark and they needed an assistant and they hired me. And I worked as an assistant for probably two years with those guys. And then they said, you know, you're seem pretty talented. Why don't we make you an editor? And so I, uh, became an editor and uh, have worked ever since. I, I'm i a supervisor. I do tend to shoot all my own loops in most of the shows I do because I like to work with the actors and I feel it's a really a good way to get close to the director. Uh, but uh, yeah, so even though I think about retirement every hour, I will probably keep working because I get all these great projects, which I are hard to turn down. <laughs> Matt? Yeah, I, like various other people on this panel it was a bit of an accident I was studying music at university music and sound recording so on the technical side and we had to do a year's placement at, from university in the industry and I thought I wanted to work in a music studio and do all that and I was interviewing and I went for an interview at a, a post facility called Videosonics that doesn't exist anymore um, and 
I was just totally blown away. I remember going in, the, the owner took me into one of the mix stages and they were mixing an M&E and they were mixing the sound of a tie falling into one soup, I think it was. And it, they just went over and over again. And I just didn't, I couldn't comprehend that I was unaware that this process happened in film. <laughs> and I was just like, from that point on, I didn't go to another music studio interview. Um, the guy at Video Sonics didn't actually want to hire me, but everyone else he wanted to hire got a job before he got around to asking them. So I was the last one left. So I got a job at that facility and I worked there for like nine years as from a T boy, working my way up. And then uh, since then, freelance just uh, as a dialogue editor and, and supervising as well when I can. Uh, now, uh, as uh, you know, sound uh, uh, artists, uh, editors, uh, you are all very, you know, involved in, in of course, uh, the sound process. So I imagine you'd notice it very uh, particularly if you're watching a film. Uh, I'm wondering if there is anything that especially excites you or impresses you about the sound design of a film or a TV show. Uh, you know, when you're when you're watching it, uh, Matt Skelting. Yeah. Um... I just love anything where the sound is involved in the storytelling. So I always go back to uh, that film, uh, Beast of the Southern Wild, which has amazing sound. And that's that, the entire storm that's played inside the hut there. Like it's just, and, and then, and the girl, she goes near the animals and she can feel the heartbeats and stuff like that. Anything where the sound is used in a really subjective manner and it's helping the story. I just, yeah, it doesn't matter how big or how small the film is or the project or the TV show. That's what I love. Michael? Um, I'm thinking about films that I thought sounded really great this past year. Um, I'm trying to think, uh, like in Belfast, they made such great choices in that film. Things that I, you know, I get jealous when I hear good stuff. Like there, you know, it's an interior scene in a house and you hear kids on the street playing. A lot of directors won't let you do that kind of stuff. And when I heard that film, I thought, man, that's a good choice by the sound editor an even better choice by the director. And it really enhanced my experience listening to the film. Um, I love when cool things like that happen that I know from experience, I've had a couple of those ideas sh shut down. <laughs> and so when those ideas get through, they can do different kind of cool things. It excites me. Jay? Um, kind of mirroring the same thing, really. I think it's just when, when you see part of the storytelling, I think comedy can be really good for that. Um, where you just kind of pick out kind of small moments um, that just really help elevate and um, yeah sorry <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matthew um, yeah just as every everyone said I mean I just think back to heavenly creatures uh, long 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 time ago and uh, and uh, the character puts a has a brick in her purse and you wait for the whole film and she puts the brick on the table her purse on the table and it sounds like a brick in the purse and the whole audience goes oh my gosh this is about to happen and I remember right then going wow man what a great yeah. choice of a sound right there so you know and I also like anything that I haven't heard before I love custom stuff I love when I go hear a film because we've all been doing this for so long when I'm in a film and I'm going oh my gosh I've never heard that before and that's amazing and it sounds great so I like that Bobby so I like really big crowd scenes right because it just envelops you I just want to feel what's going on in that scene so I just love big crowd scenes and I also know how hard it is sometimes to achieve between effects and ADR group um, but I also like really good effects like I like wind storms. Like I like to feel, I like to hear like sand, like just little particles, right? Or fires where if I'm looking at something, it's like, man, I want to feel the heat of the fire. So I just love effects that way. And um, in Baby Driver, where they had the effects and the music was just, it was powerful the way that the scene played. So I just love those kind of things. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, you know, be, having worked in, in the business for, uh, for years, uh, all of you have uh, quite a lot of experience. What have you learned that you wish you kind of knew about the business when you were starting out, uh, Michael? Um, one of the things I think people worry about is like to try for 
to hope that problems don't arise. Problems in post-production are going to arise constantly. The key is how you handle those problems. And the thing you're worried about generally doesn't even take place. It's something that comes out of left field that you didn't even plan for. And as I've gotten older and more experienced, I firmly believe in not panicking. <laughs> I, I can generally fix something somewhere. I, you know, if I didn't record an actor to do that certain thing, I think, oh, I could grab that from there. And I think all of us, as we get more experience, just get more, much more confident and uh, hopefully less panicky, at least I am. Bobby? Um, I would say also um, don't take things personal. Um, you know, a lot of times people, you never know what kind of day or morning somebody's had. And, you know, so some of the things that you might encounter with people, it really has to do with them a lot. And so just really to be a person who can study people and to really help people feel at ease because everything is just so intense and people are just on edge all the, a lot of the time. So when you're that voice of um, reason and, you know, it's going to be okay and giving solutions and things like that, I think that that's very helpful. Uh, Matt Skelding? Um, I think, I think it's to, like, to seek out nice people to work with. I don't know if I necessarily did that initially, because like, I guess you don't have that opportunity. But like, I know now that I just... I'm in such a privileged position now that I just work with nice people and in the sound team and beyond that in sort of production and, and, and yeah, like just put more thought into who you're working with, I think, and just work with nice people who treat you nicely and want to make good, good TV and good film. I think that's, yeah, that's what I should have done more of. <laughs> uh, Matthew? Uh, uh, you know, for me, it was just, it, it, uh, you know, I think it, it all is our steps, you know, and experience and stuff like that. And, uh, I think the biggest one for me was, uh, two things, realizing that most people don't know what we do and you think they do. And so you have to be vocal and explain that, oh, I've got this, I'm doing this. Oh, you know, they didn't know that. And then I guess the other thing is, you know, in a sound uh, design perspective, you know, when I first started, I just wanted to make the coolest sounds. I actually didn't probably even pay attention to what was on screen. And now I realize three years, it's actually all about what's on screen. And that's what matters. And that's what's cool. Jay? Um, <clears throat> for me, I think it's the same thing of like taking a step back and really understanding what it needs is, you know, before I've kind of really worked on seeing all these sounds in there and it's all kind of like, yeah, it's great. And the director will come in and go, mm, let's, can we strip it all back? And you sit back and you go, yeah, that works better, doesn't it, actually? And it's just like, sound's not always the answer, I think, and, you know, less is more. I think that's one thing I kind of got to, really. Um, and, you know, last question. Um, is, is there a particular genre or setting that uh, you haven't worked in uh, that you would very much like to, to create sound for, uh, Matt Skelly? Yes, because I'm English. I just want to do a Western. And I'm never going to get asked to do a Western in my entire career, but that's what I want to do. And it's yeah. never going to happen. I just want to interject because you don't even have to wait for me. That's exactly what I want to do. I really, <laughs> really, 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 before I finish, want to do a Western. Well, I think you've stand more chance than I do. Really. <laughs> uh, well, you never know who's watching this. So, you know, uh, just just to, to let anyone know who's directing or producing a Western, uh, you know, <laughs> to give you a call. Uh, Bobby? Um, I've not done a musical yet. So I think that that would be great. So that's it for me. Uh, Jay? Um, I think 3D animation. I think that's one thing I haven't really explored. That'd be something I'd be very interested to try. I think building the whole world from scratch. That'd be very fun. And Michael? I haven't really done much sci-fi. I was, I just actually turned down something sci-fi because it didn't work out schedule-wise. But I think that might be interesting because you're creating a whole uh, world that hopefully no one's heard before. I know it's kind of cliched, but um, that's part of the job. And I think that might be kind of challenging in trying stuff in a sci-fi setting. Uh, well, uh, I want to congratulate all of you again on uh, the work you've done, uh, uh, all so, so different and so exciting to talk about. And uh, thank you all for joining me today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Daniel.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, so thank much. you. Great job. Thank you. Thank you.